Hello, my name is Marcio Giraudelli. I'm a quality engineer in JiraPore, and I'm here to share with you my experience with a UX measurement framework called GONS. Today, I'm going through some thoughts about quality and UX. Then, I'll explain basic concepts about GONS. I did some practical exercise over one particular UX improvement delivered in Jira 7, and I made some rough interpretations of the numbers. I'll show what I did to demonstrate the practical usage of GOMS and how to quickly analyze the numbers. Lastly, I will talk about some improvements we can make into GOMS to make it more close to Atalassian design principles. So quality at UX. In October last year, a customer churn data analysis revealed that UI complexity is a big cause of paid customers stop using Jira. This very same analysis also revealed that bugs in production is a lower cause than we really thought it was. This result sprung a discussion among Jira QA world on how QAs can help improve the quality around Jira UX. Given QA's love metrics and experience, we need new scientific methods. GOMS is a UX score system where you give points to each small interaction a user goes through to achieve a goal. The higher the score, the worse the user experience. GOMS stands for Goals, specific action a user wants to accomplish. For example, give assign issue permission to a user group. Operators, a subset of user interactions and respective costs. For example, scan text in a list, choose a button to click, read a text, etc. Methods, the group of operators a particular type of user goes through. For example, mouse only, mouse plus keyboard, touch screen, etc. And select method. The criteria to select the method, for example, the user persona, the type of device used, etc. So use case example. I'm going to demonstrate a practical usage of GOMS. I chosen a random specific Jira UX improvement that happened in Jira 7. Uh, this is just a basic demo. It should not be used to judge if the improvement was good or bad. So the goal, in Jira, grant the assigned issue permission to a user group. The operators I chosen for this demo is click one point, point a mouse to a target three points, scan text in a list four points, and choose a button or link to click two points. And the method is mouse only, no keyboard interaction. So let's start with Jira 6.4. This is the starting page for granting permission. So if I want to grant the assign issue permission to a user group, I need to go through these actions. I need to search the assign issue entry, choose the add link to click, point the mouse to target, and click. This is the score. And then I get this page. To continue with my goal, I need to go through these actions. I need to search the group entry, point the mouse to the group down, click, choose the group I want, point the mouse to the group that I want, click again, choose the OK button, the submit button below, point the mouse again and click. These are all the score. This gives me, gives me a final score to achieve the goal of 35. Now let's analyze Jira 7. So this is the new starting page. We can see that we have a big grant permission button up there. So let's start with, with that. We need to choose the button, point, point the mouse and click. This is the score. Then we get this new dialog. I need to click in the permission text field, scan the permission I want in the drop down, point the mouse where I uh, from in the permission I want, click again, scan the group in the radio options below, point the mouse, click, scan the group that I want in the list that we will show, point the mouse, click again, choose the grant, the submit button, point and click again. This is this gives me the final score of 45 in Jira 7. This is a this 45 is not a, it's a worse score. So how can we analyze this number? So in Jira 7, if we want to decrease the final score, in the new dialog, we could list the most used permissions in the permission text field. By doing that, we would get rid of the first two actions, decreasing the final score from, from 43 to 39. Another thing we could try to do is analyze the score from the two ways to add a new permission, via the grant permission button or via the edit link, and focus the UX development on the lower score one. Okay, extending the metrics. I had a quick chat with an Atalassian designer and we talked about how GOMS could match with Atalassian design principles. Some key concepts are give clarity. 
Actions that happen inside the dialog provides more clarity to the user. We could have a coefficient decrease in GOM score in all actions happening inside a contextualized dialog. In the previous example, that would have given a much better score in Jira 7 grant permission flow. So for example, we could use a coefficient of 0.8 for all the actions happening inside the dialog, decreasing the score from 37 to 30, making Jira 7 score much better than Jira 6.4. Human touch. We could decrease points in every flow which we provide contextualized help for the user. For instance, if in that dialog there were a help link particular for that action, we could have minus 5 points. Harmonious. In an actual Jira admin page for some actions, for instance adding a field in a transition screen, the user needs to go to different contexts. Custom fields, workflow edition, screen schemes, etc. We could add a fixed score penalty for each context change happening when a user is trying to achieve his goal. So, takeaways. To summarize, here are the advantages we can introduce in our process by using GOMS. Measure before ship. Today, most if not all metrics related to UX improvement relies on experiments. Experiments are great, but they have costs. You have a time gap from development to data analysis. Measuring before ship is a way to decrease those costs. Quantitative data provides a way to set goals to UX related improvements. Also, it makes easier to show, with graphic data, the UX improvements achieved. And automation possibilities. I didn't dig too much into this subject, but I believe there are some possibilities of automation. For instance, having a score in web driver tests. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this different approach into measuring UX improvements. Thank you.